Hey, don't talk about Minecraft. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I am Blake Connor, here with Josh Elliott. Was I supposed to say something? <laughs> you can, I guess, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah. To be fair, I didn't tell you to introduce yourself. So I don't this think always there happens. Any, I don't think there are any podcasters that are worse at intros than we are. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. It never works. <laughs> it's never smooth. Um, to address the elephant in the room, this is Gage Perkins. He is going to be our guest for today. But before I get too far into why Gage is here, I want to mention something else that's happening. As a lot of you out there on our YouTube channel know, we are currently working on Super Mario Sunshine the Musical, and I just wanted to announce that we are doing a monthly newsletter. Um, you can subscribe to this newsletter by emailing us at mariosunshinethemusical at gmail.com, which I will put on the screen here. Um, just shoot us an email saying I would like to subscribe to the newsletter, and we will send it to you. We're going to be including a lot of behind the scenes goodies, we're going to be including um, little videos, BTS content, and we will also be having donation prizes for anybody who supports us. So that's all I wanted to say on that. Also, the newsletter the newsletter is free to subscribe to. Oh yeah, it's you free. Don't you, to, don't... you don't have to pay anything to receive the newsletter. No, and, uh, you can just email us. Yeah, and then you'll get all the all the updates uh, for the musical as we release them. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, Gage is here because, um, well, just just recently he's told me that he's become a big um, purveyor of Destination Unknown. Um, what episode are you on, Gage? Oh, uh, six, seven, six. I have, I have been pretty busy lately. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to watch it. And uh, I have watched several episodes, including the latest episode, which is what brought this all up. Um, this was all brought on because um, Gage told me that he'd... Well, we mentioned to him in passing that we talked about him in the last episode. Um, in the last episode of Destination Unknown, we talked about um, a man dancing in a dress um, with Josh. <laughs> Bailey, didn't you and I slow dance to somebody else's talent? <laughs> did we? I think I think you did, Josh. You were wearing it was the Gage, Dixon right? wig. Gage Perkins. I was not on stage for Gage Perkins then. Were you slow dance with somebody, Josh? Well, Gage listened to this podcast, and would you would you like to take a little bit of the story from here? Yeah. Which, what uh, so I proceeded to watch the podcast, wondering as you know what what they had to say about me, and um, it was all brought up, and I all brought back memories, and whenever they proceeded to talk about Mr. B&L, I specifically remembered that they were just horribly incorrect about what they had thought. <laughs> they thought there was a man who dr who dressed in a dress and danced with Josh behind my act. Um, I was quick to correct them and tell them that it was, in fact, Josh in the dress dancing <laughs> with Blake. Okay? And neither of them Neither of them remembered it that way, and very skeptical. I mean, they Blake kind of said, I believe you, but he still did not believe me. Oh, no, so he then, absolutely did not believe you. <laughs> I, it's exactly. True. I didn't. And then they proceeded to reach out to another friend who was there, and that friend misremembered it to the point he thought it was him <laughs> in doing the whole thing. Imagine Shout out to thinking Austin. it was you. Yeah, Austin, like... He had nothing to do with the show, and he still put himself in that memory <laughs> as doing something like that, well, dancing on stage in front of a whole school in a dress, and he misremembered it that. Bad. I think, I think, um, Josh, did you prompt the question to him like that? Did you ask yes, if I, it was him? I did. So I, I texted him and I said, "Okay, we're Blake and I are trying to remember who I danced with on stage at Mr. BNL during Gage's talent," and I texted him. I was like. Was it you or was it Bailey? Because I thought it was Bailey, but Gage swears it wasn't. And, and it also was, was like, those no, 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 yeah, it was me, and <laughs> and it wasn't. My Which, my favorite. To be okay. fair, to to defend Austin a little bit, we have a a lot of times in the past forced Austin to play a girl in like different videos. <laughs> and things. Well, so like, yeah, he's just like, yeah, you probably, you guys probably made me do that. Yeah. His willing sure. the memories um, my, okay. could have blended together. This all happened. Um, the re the only reason we know we know the truth is because I was texting Josh about this after you had told me that it was us, that it was me and 
Josh. And I texted Josh and I was like, Gage said it was me and you. I said, I don't think I believe that. I said, I just don't think that's true. I and, didn't uh, at you, all. I did no, not and you didn't either. And um, Gage said Josh wore a dress. And I said, Josh, did you wear a dress? And you said, no, I didn't wear a dress. I, I do not believe that I wore a dress. And then a few and texts the video. later, and then the f- a few texts later, I was like, I don't think I wore a dress. <laughs> yeah. So there was already doubt instilled in your mind. And they still, I mean, they might have, I might have convinced them to the point where they would have kind of believed me or just admitted that they didn't remember. But the only way that I got them to flat out, like, just say, I'm right, you're wrong, okay, <laughs> is that my aunt happened to still have all the recordings of the whole act, and it was very clear who it was back there. Um, <laughs> and I finally got them to buy into it, and Blake's yeah. was still very confused. Something, something about watching that video, too, um, makes you realize how cool it was in your head how awesome all of these talents that we were doing were, how funny we thought we were. And then you watch it back when you're, you know, yeah. five years removed from it. You're like, oh God, that was so lame. <laughs> like what we were doing. <laughs> like we, you, you told me that she had my talent and I was like, I'd rather never see it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have it live on in memory. Yeah. It was, it was, it was fun. That's I'll be honest yeah. with you guys. When I saw the video, I, I had a little bit of a crisis because it was like so cemented in my memory that it was that I was not the one wearing the dress and that I was <laughs> dancing with somebody else that when I saw the video, like it rocked my world. It makes like, sure I was really... in, I was in disbelief for the first like yeah. few seconds of the video. And I was like, no, it's right here. Like this is it. <laughs> like I still it makes you question what it. you believe. Like, uh, how many of, how many memories, like how many lies have I told until they became the truth in my head? Like if I've ever exaggerated a story, something as simple as like, picture this, like you talk about a fish that you caught or something like that and nobody else is there to see it. And so you leave and you start exaggerating how big it was. You're like, I caught this fish that was like yay big. And you, you hold out your hands to about a foot long and they're like, oh, that's pretty impressive. And then the next time you tell the story, it's a foot and a half. And years later, you forget that you caught a four inch fish. And instead, it's it's 18 inches long. And you truly believe. Yeah, and you truly believe that that happened. Like, I wonder how much. What was what was that called? The uh, Mandela Man- effect. Yeah, I had not I had not heard that before yes. you mentioned that to me. Do you want to elaborate on that for people who don't know what that is? Um, well, Josh will be able to help me here a little bit. But uh, the Mandela effect is basically um, when people misremember things. Uh, that is named after um, Nelson Mandela. Yeah, uh, people uh, thought that. He was he had died when he had in fact not. There's even people that they interviewed that uh, said they remembered going to his funeral, uh, which was not the case because he, he was not dead at that point. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, imagine how stupid you feel then. <laughs> right. So that's why that's how it got the name the Mandela effect. And there's simple things. Uh, there's different examples of it. There's um, conspiracy theories about it and everything else. Uh, but Josh, you had a good one a while ago. What your example? Um. Yeah, basically it's I think it's applied primarily when um when large amounts of people misremember the same thing the same way. Right. So like where a lot of people thought they went to this this guy's funeral but they actually didn't. Mm-hmm. Um one of the famous examples that I have seen of it is uh like with the Pillsbury Doughboy who has uh like his scarf because large amounts of people remember it as being blue but it has actually never been blue. Like it's always been white. Mm, that's um, funny that you say that. Cause I, I, in my head it is blue. Yeah, no, for me too. It is, but, but it is always been white and that's just one example of it. But, um, I'm sure uh, there another, are other examples that we could several, have. like the gas Pixar station film, uh, examples, I think, you know, what'd you, um, movies and stuff. What'd you say? Junction? Gas station. Jo- okay. Everybody calls it, Johnny's Junction. There's a gas station in our hometown. The name of that gas station is Johnny Junctions. And everybody calls it Johnny's Junction because that makes more sense. But like yeah. if you look at the sign, it's like the where the apostrophe and like where the possession of the word is is on the opposite word. Yeah. And it's I guess like, I think uh, that's a thing that I don't I guess, know if that's technically I guess Mandela. and I don't <laughs> I feel bad for the non Bedford people with all these Bedford examples. But I think <laughs> yeah. Greco's is the same way. Like, I feel like a lot of people pronounce it Greco's, but yeah. it's actually like G-R-E-C-C-O-S. Like, it's the Greco's. Yeah. But. Um, I don't know. Um, 
going back to um, the the whole Mr. BNL thing, I was talking about how I said it was it was kind of like s seeing us do these things on stage. Now, Josh, you played piano, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, for your talent, like at least <laughs> I did a lot one of, year. I don't a lot know. of people had talents like well like me and gage we like lip-synced or we sang or something that's like yeah. not necessarily like a talent but it's funny oh it certainly not uh -huh. <laughs> we, were, we were just out there and then, <laughs> not there to win <laughs> yeah and other people went out there and actually did like really uh fit, like when mark did um he did what a wonderful world and louis armstrong's voice oh yeah yeah yeah. i thought that was, that was so cool yeah that was so yeah. very cool. enjoyable um it when, was it when, was funny though too like yeah yes it was. when joffrey did his talent um the following year or maybe it was two years later it was two he, years later he performed um we me and josh somehow we both ended up back at mr bnl i think we were, would have been sophomores in college at that time and for the other uninitiated joff livingston is he's a uh, king boo and luigi's mansion the musical he sang my way by frank sinatra and i've never seen something like this everybody in the room like in this high school auditorium pulled out their phones with their lights and they started making yeah. it like a concert and so the whole that room lit up cool, yeah. it was yeah it was, it was awesome yeah, I, who, I'm still upset that he didn't win, but me too. <laughs> who, who Hashtag not my Mr. BNL. Um, <sighs> <laughs> this, this just hit me like a freight train. But who was it that? Uh, oh, he he. Well, somebody wheeled him out in a wheelchair. Me and Caleb Hawkins. fought. <laughs> <laughs> that one I will remember very well. <laughs> I wheeled, I wheeled out Caleb Fott and just and like, left was him out that, there. Was that his costume? Or yeah. Was it, <laughs> he was just like, he was just sitting there like. And I don't the, remember which club. What was the music? What was the music? Was it really remember. upbeat? It was let the body sit the floor or was that? <laughs> oh. I don't it could be yeah. I believe it was. I think it was. I believe it was because it was, it was, oh, it was hilarious though. I, Dude, the, um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess. My talent at Mr. BNL must have been cooler than I remembered because that talent is how I got my first girlfriend. Did you know that? At Mr. BNL, mm -hmm. Gage. Yeah, we um, just talked about this the other day. Yeah, yeah out of about, uh, well. Ladies, it, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it happened because at Steak and Shake afterwards, because we all went to Steak and Shake because that's, you know, that's what we did back in Bedford. That's all um, you do in Bedford. This, this girl didn't even approach <laughs> right. me. It was Cole Cruz who approached me, our other friend. And he was like, hey, man. He was like, this girl, she's into you. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, why? She doesn't even know me. He's like, man, she saw you up there on the stage and she thought you were hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so it turned into like basically what was like a blind date. I just started texting this girl that I didn't even know. And I don't know, that turned into, I guess it wasn't, wasn't all bad. The relationship was a sham and it lasted like uh, five weeks. But well, yeah. <laughs> That's a given. That's all I, gotta I say don't. About I don't. I just don't. I I laughed earlier, and I want to clarify because I wasn't laughing at somebody thinking you were attractive, Blake. I was <laughs> laughing at the idea it. of something from your performance wooing someone. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What, what did oh, I yeah. do? What did I like? Was she, she was just sitting in the audience, like feeling some kind of way, like watching me on stage, like I gotta get that guy's number. Like, it's really weird. Like, in, in a, <laughs> In a Bane mask. Like. Yeah. Yeah, my talent was, I sang Total Eclipse of the Heart dressed as Bane. So I was like, once upon a time I was falling in love. Like, what about that is attractive? <laughs> she melted. Like, she's going to tell your grandkids, yeah, the first time I saw him up there, I didn't even know what movie he was from. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking in a really, or he was singing in a really muffled voice. Was so he sexy. was dressed. <laughs> he was dressed as Darth Vader up on stage. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it was Darth Vader. <laughs> he broke Spider Man over his back. It was so hot. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Um. Now this this is I I actually uh, looked at uh, I won't name anybody because I feel it's it's weird and I don't want to rehash the past like that but this is this is a question that i'm i'm interested to know from you guys do you guys ever keep up with like um old girlfriends on like social media or anything like that or no. do you do you block all of them from everything i i don't have i would i would say i've only had two girlfriends prior to my current girlfriend because as far as like actual like like relationships, relationships. That went somewhere yeah like, this wasn't even but, one of those this girl that i'm talking about right but uh yeah no i don't um I suppose my last girlfriend and I, uh, sometime after the breakup, we had 
we just developed it like we're not gonna be mad at each other. There's no reason for it to be the drama. Yeah, you know, be grown yeah. up about it. Like we're just two people that's related ways, you know. But I wouldn't say I could keep up with them, any of them. Fair yeah, enough. Um I mean my my pa- my most recent relationship, right afterwards, um I and I only have two social medias, but I did block them uh for a little while. Yeah. Um but once I had <laughs> once I had come like past the point of um being tempted to like look at their social medias and that kind of things. Um, yeah. once I got past like that like that weird stage, um I unblocked them and I just don't really think about it anymore. Yeah. But, now when um, you say you unblocked them, you just you didn't like follow them back, you just unblocked no. them. No, and I mean I think that it's very possible and really cool if you um, do continue to be friends like with your exes. Yeah. Um, I, for the most part, have never done that. <laughs> but, yeah, me neither. But it's, um, it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not because especially like with longer, like longer relationships, you yeah. just get to this point of like, like um intimacy and this like certain kind of bond with someone that when it ends it's like i don't know if you can it's hard to go back to such you a you can't like, take it it's back hard, it's hard to detach yourself from yeah. those memories and yeah you can't from that. you can't go back to like just being friends a lot of the yeah. time um you can't and I mean, look at somebody I think the some, same way in the yeah, face yeah, you know if you love them. a different way you know but um, i don't know I, which i might you know what i consider my first girlfriend in high school which you you guys obviously know who i'm talking about yeah and the way it ended was you know quite a bit oh you mean than... no i'm just kidding I'm yeah sorry. and um <clears throat> so i mean last time i saw her like it was oddly it, I, I felt like it was awkward but she didn't treat it that way and we just i mean just said hi to each other and moved on but that was the that's the only time i've seen her since that we split up but like i don't know i don't feel tempted to uh keep up with no you... there was probably a time immediately after i was but i mean obviously like earlier said there's a relationship built so far and you're tempted to do that for a while and then but it's only it's not i mean it's not a good idea anyway but what do you think about um going so what do you think about going back to a relationship if you know somebody had like if you've been broken up with like do you think there's ever a chance again in the future or do you think it's just something that you let lie i mean say... i think it I think it depends on why you broke up in the first place. Like That's true. if it's a if it's a situational thing with like a season of life um, where yeah. something just doesn't work out with another person, or if yeah. it's like a maturity thing and you were together when you were younger and you yeah. weren't ready for a relationship and then you like grow up a bit and maybe want to try again. Like I think so, but yeah, I, think... I don't know. I think there are situations where either way, like sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, I'd agree it very by the situation. Uh, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've been in a position where that would be the case, but uh, I definitely agree that there are situations where that could be applied. Uh, for for me, it's always been this idea of like, if it didn't work out, and I've really not been in many like long-term relationships that ended, but it's always been this idea of like, if it didn't work out and it's over with, it's like by, you know, two months yeah. afterwards, like a month to two months afterwards, it's like, I just, I feel like I'm over it. Like I still feel emotional say, but it's like, I don't, Maybe I don't miss that person anymore. Like say they've left, they've left my life and it's done. And it's like, there, there'll always be those, uh, those memories, but it's like, I don't miss that. I don't need to go back to that. And it feels like there's just so many other options. Like I would never like, um, which I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy in a relationship now anyway. So like I, <laughs> all of this is irrelevant, but, right. um, speaking objectively, like say if I weren't, I still wouldn't go back and message these other people because it's like, it already didn't work out once. Like why would it yeah. work out again right. now? It's like, why yeah, not I mean, try if, something new? If circumstances didn't change, then I don't think it would work out differently. But, yeah, um, yeah. like if, if you're both the same person, why would it work the second yeah. time if it didn't work the first time? Yeah, but I mean, if you broke up the first time because of like distance or something, and then yeah. like one of you moves closer to the other, like I could see something like that being like, yeah. hey, let's give this a go again. Like, but yeah. No, for sure. Um, are you trying are to date lot? me, Blake? Gage, maybe leave the room. Uh, I have some <laughs> things that I need to get out. Uh, did you did you not win best bromance in high school? No, uh, he and Austin I think, did. I think oh. me and Austin did. Yeah, no, I know for a fact he and Austin oh. did. Um, yeah, <laughs> that must burn. Not Sorry, really. Like... 
Dude, Blake was wasn't very uh, affectionate in high school. Yeah, no, that's true. I was not very affectionate in high school. <laughs> um, I have since uh, changed my ways, and I'm a more um, well. It's, it's because Josh just he just puts his hands all over you. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I said, I, I said it now. I said it. I feel weird now. Dude, my mom watches this podcast. Your mom watches this podcast? I'm just kidding. Well, Tracy know, Elliott true. understand that your son is too touchy. I, I will say I was greeted with a hug at Golden Corral by Josh um, after not seeing him for a while. And then uh, I was greeted by a handshake by Josh. And I... I just, that was just the start. And you were, I was just like, I was just. You were thinking. acknowledged from afar by me. I said, "Right, how yeah. do you do?" Blake just kind of stood in the corner and spit on me. <laughs> so, and that was about as much as I got out of that. Oh, no, I, I was actually. Uh, I was just thinking how it's it's kind of odd because um, Bracey was asking me about this today, and he asked me if uh, if I was close friends with Josh, and I was sitting there thinking, I was like, "Well, I mean, I would say yeah, but." Every, but then I got to thinking every time I'm around Josh or talk to Josh, like right now, um, it's through you or another mutual friend. <laughs> I was just thinking like, I just told him today, I was like, me and Josh have never went out of our ways to hang out with each other or talk to each other. Like yeah. it's always through someone else. But like, I was like, no, but I still love the guy. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just kind of, it was just, uh, it came yeah. up my head now. I just thought that was, that is kind of odd. That, but yeah, I think it's probably a source of like a, a, a habit thing. <laughs> Like, yeah, just don't it, think of it. Right. But, it was, it's just always worked out to where, there, you know, it was through Blake or someone. We'll but, hang out next time I'm in Bedford without Blake. Good deal. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just not tell him. Dude, that's how I feel about <laughs> No, we'll tell him, but <laughs> you'll we'll be like, intentionally tell him that he's not invited. <laughs> hey, Blake, that's, we're going to Golden Corral. <laughs> yeah, just I'll let fine. you know. <laughs> that's fine. You like, you text me like, hey, we're going to Golden Corral. I go, oh, we are? And you're like, yeah, me engaged. I'm like, can I come? And you're like, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> no way no that's kind of how i feel about mark i love mark huddleston to death but i don't think i've ever like out of, in my own volition like gone out of my way to just go see mark it's like i would always see mark at johnson when i was with you because you were his roommate and i would always want to see mark but it's like it was always in the context of being with josh and like that's not i don't necessarily see it as a bad thing but it's like yeah i've been i've been thinking about um reaching out to him and lexi and like asking about going to, like lunch or something i think that'd be fun um so yeah. if they listen to this podcast um Mark, I'm going to text you and ask you about going to lunch soon. I doubt, I doubt they'll listen to it, but uh... by the time he sees that, he gets like that. ding on his phone. Like before we upload this podcast, like here in a minute, I get a text from him. It's like, hey, you want to go out? Yeah. <laughs> One time, Josh made me read a text from Bailey Connerly because he heard my phone buzz, and then I'm pretty sure Bailey like watched the, the podcast. podcast. Yeah, Bailey watched the podcast where I read his text out loud. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it, was, it was weird. Hey, oh. if, you, if your phone buzzes in the middle of the podcast, it's fair game for everyone. That's fair. Present. I forgot to put it on Do Not Disturb. Oh, God, it could buzz at any moment. I don't have to read any text that I get. <laughs> That's the rule. And if I get a text from Ty, it could be terrible. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, Ty sends me some weird stuff. Usually they're surreal memes, and it's, like, things that, like, I, I can't... There's some, like, social medias. I followed a bunch of meme pages on Instagram for a while where it's, like, I can't open my phone in public with this stuff it's like i think it's funny but it's just so out there and like a lot of it's just like oh probably like i don't want the general public to see me looking at this ty is in sw in sfw yeah in sfw when i get a text from him i'm like a little nervous about what it's gonna say just through that's like i wouldn't bailey connerly I can see yeah oh yeah or a snapchat from bailey connerly my lord i won't i won't go into the details about that but that man sends some <laughs> weird snapchats um, i don't open snapchats from bailey connerly when i'm around uh, other people yeah, uh, or Caleb Higgins. Like, I don't get his his Snapchats often, but I've gotten some odd ones. From him. <laughs> some strange ones. Strange um, ones. Are, is there, going back to what we were talking about before on social media, is there, you don't have to give me a list. That's not what I'm asking for. But do you guys have more people blocked on social media? And if so, why? Like, do you have anybody um, that you just cannot stand, like you don't want to see them pop up in your feed? Like I said, I don't, don't have... mention names. I don't want to start a beef. <laughs> yeah, here's my list. Um, <laughs> now, you, I don't you have... get a message. You talking shit? Huh? I actually <laughs> don't have anybody blocked on social media. Um, I have like silenced people on Facebook. Like I don't know what that's actually called. 
like, did you, like, unfollow them or something? Yeah, unfollow Like, you're friends with them? Like, I'm still friends with them, but I don't, like, see their posts. Yeah. I've unfollowed some of my family members. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But, um... Not you, Mom. (laughs) Yeah, not my mom. I love my mom. I love my mom so much. Um, But, yeah, I I do not have anybody blocked. I don't don't believe I do either. I I think uh, usually if I, um... If I get tired of some seeing someone's posts or something, I just yeah. stop all of them. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's pretty like as far like especially Instagram, you're you're not gonna see anything of them if you're not following them. Yeah. Recently, uh, I have been unfriending a lot of people. <laughs> like, I'll just yeah. see I'll just see posts from people where for one, like it's one of two things. One, it's either like something that's so stupid that I'm like, I don't want to like associate. Yeah, I don't want to associate with this person. Or anymore. on the other hand, it's from someone and it's like. I don't even know who this is. Yeah. Because there was a point in time where I would just accept every friend request on Facebook. I remember that. I remember those days. It was was a lawless wasteland. (laughs) Which I don't understand the logic in that. I think like subconsciously it's like, oh, I want to have a large friend count. Large following, yeah. (laughs) I remember I was in this this Facebook group for a while called Friends That Do Airsoft when I was growing up. Probably like from like fourth through eighth grade or something like that. When I was really big into airsoft. This um, wall in my closet over here, um, you can't see it, but it used to be a big gun wall. Like I put nails in the wall and made my dad really mad. And I hung up all my (laughs) airsoft guns in there. Yeah, Yeah, he told me like when I left for college, he's like, you're going to fix that wall. (laughs) And I did. I've since fixed it. You're welcome, dad. (laughs) And... I have some, going back to the point, friends that do airsoft, I ended up with all of these friends from Indonesia because it was like this weird group that had like five kids from Bedford, Indiana in it, like from Bedford, Indiana, and then everybody else in the group was Indonesian. And I have no idea how they connected, but I'm still friends with some of these people. And I talk with a few of them sometimes on Messenger, Messenger, but like just the culture there is so different. Like they share like, um, you know, like those uh, videos on Facebook where like it has the eye. It's like this may contain content that you don't want to see. Oh, like click yeah. to uncover of yeah. like like military action and like Ugh. dead people. Sometimes I'm like, oh, don't want to see yeah. that. Like, did you guys I've never... ever? Did you guys ever get together for some Bedford v Indonesia uh, airsoft? <laughs> yeah, they flew in from Jakarta. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like I know marginally more about what it's like out there from um the brief conversations that i've had with them um and it scares me a little bit um the things that they've told me about where they live um i'm happy to live in in small town usa where i don't have to worry about um the violence yeah you know yeah we we all grew up in the same uh the same town and there is literally like no danger <laughs> well, there's outside, the occasional of few, method. Oh, yeah. outside of a few key instances over the yeah. past like decade but stay like... away from circle k's around 2 a.m <laughs> yeah that's, that's what that's what you need gage i remember uh, we you and me we go way back we uh i met you in the third grade third grade i remember that that's when i moved to heltonville you moved to heltonville i will never forget because you put up a cat drawing on the wall. I do remember this vividly. Oh and uh, you put a picture of a cat right by the light switch and you hung it up and you taped it up in Miss Moore's classroom. Oh and it, you wrote on it, it, this took three days to make. And I approached you that day and I was like, you traced that, didn't you? And you're like, what? No, I didn't trace that. I'm and then <laughs> years later, like, years came later. straight out of a, like, trace this book. <laughs> you, like, you admitted it to trace. Me. Like, yeah. it came with transparent pages that just like laid over a drawing <laughs> and you just like a pencil over it. I don't know. I, and like you, like when I hung up the drawing on the wall, you could see straight through the paper. That's how like transparent it was, so you could trace. Things. No, I drew it. Yeah. No, I definitely. Yeah. Uh, I That's I had awesome. some issues in third grade for sure. Oh man. In third but grade, okay. I lived in Kentucky. You did, Josh. You've yeah. been all over the place. I have. Um, like a madman. Gage, I still remember we we've gone through some talking about airsoft wars. I remember oh. when we used to have. Uh, that was, that was always a fun event on your birthday party. We would go out in the freezing, freezing temperatures where there was just ice coating oh, the yeah. ground. Uh, one, one year. And airsoft wars. One year it was actually freezing rain. And when I got back inside and took my hat off, it was it was just like solid, stiff, and covered in a sheet of ice. <laughs> and yeah, it was horrible. But we didn't care. We were shooting each other. And it hurt ten times worse. When oh, yeah. When you're, when you're like, when your skin is, like, red and just from the cold. Everything's so sore. One time I got shot in the earlobe 
when it was cold outside yeah, and it that, swelled. That's, that's absolutely the worst. Oh my god. Do you guys have any crazy airsoft stories? <clears throat> oh well, <laughs> back in Nam. I can't think of any like really specific ones other than uh the year that i got a paintball gun for my birthday oh yeah that was that was real fair what you did to us out there (laughs) please elaborate on what you did uh so you know as blake previously mentioned we had airsoft wars on my birthday and now we now you gotta understand i live i used to live on this like farm yeah so we had a couple barns outside so much land lots of hay put in the barns so we had the, the teenage boys dream for airsoft and paintball yeah. but we only did airsoft okay and one year uh i think it's probably like the lot one of the last times we did it really yeah. but um i got a paintball gun and we all went out and basically had a barn here and a barn 90 degrees to it so it was kind of like fort a fort b and we had to attack each other and sneak into each other's forts or whatever so as everybody's fighting and all confused and shooting and all out chaos, I sneak back inside, grab my paintball gun along with paintballs, and I sneak back outside and proceed to shoot the side of the barn, which is metal, um, very fast with paintballs, and it scared the crap out of everybody. And um, <laughs> I felt so powerful because everybody was like. <laughs> No, please stop! No, no. We we didn't have any firepower that could compete. Think fair. about think about the pain of getting shot with an airsoft BB versus paintballs. Like to this day, getting hit by a paintball gun sucks. Like it's not a fun feeling. You're like, oh, oh I mean, like yeah. that doesn't feel good. Oh no, no, no. Especially in that bruise, cold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then um, I remember oh, playing paintball in the cold is w- the worst because they mm-hmm. sometimes don't br- like bust. You just get struck by a projectile. Like, like, that's, <laughs> yeah, that that was where I was going with with this because I remember that same night, and of course, yeah, we're doing this in the dark because we're crazy. But uh, that same night or evening, whatever you want to say, I proceeded to tell them like, "Hey, okay, all right, fine, I'll stop, I'll stop." And everybody came out, <laughs> we was all talking about it and stuff. And um, Clay, um, um, Clay gosh, Sullivan. Clay Sullivan. Yeah. I lost it for a second. Clay Sullivan was walking along, and he had these cargo pants on. And I remember seeing him walk out and from beside the barn, and I just start shooting paintball gun at him. And by this point, I'm pretty sure they had frozen in in the <laughs> chamber. And <laughs> I, sh- I landed one really well in his leg, but I hit his pouch. And it knocked his leg out from underneath him. <laughs> and he had an airsoft pistol, like oh, a new one, in his pocket. And it broke it. Because I remember him being oh. so upset about that. Oh. But Clay was also a type that you could just, like, push down a flight of stairs. And he'd get back up and, like, laugh at it. Oh, you know I remember. I mean? I, it's been such a long time since I talked to Clay. Clay was, um, if you talk about, like, when we were talking about doing stunts, um, Clay was that guy when we were in, like, 7th and 8th grade. Before I ever met you, Josh, um, we sh- went to shoot... What was that? Nerfed too. Yeah. We tried to, sh- to shoot like four Nerf videos that never came to. Fr- we tried to make sequels to sequels that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Like we tried Nerfed three when Nerfed two never panned out. I digress. Clay, he rolled down a giant hill for us. Yeah, just like back he, there. Like when just it's... out in my woods, he acted like he'd been shot in the head, and he rolled like sideways, tumbling down a hill. No idea where to hey, go. Not a hill. Like, it was. It was. It was. It was between it was a blurred line between a hill and a cliff. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It was like a slight a little gray area yeah. about how steep this boy was. But yeah, it was um, it was crazy. He did he did that for us. Um Yeah, he was he was the original um uh Connor Thompson. Something else that I'll add from the last podcast, another redaction, is that in the video that we showed, uh, we talked about Connor Thompson jumping off of the second story. The only reason we mentioned Connor Thompson jumping off the second story is because we didn't ask him to do it. We asked Gage to jump off the second story. Well, I just warned the letter yeah. if I know that no. I did do it also. Okay. <laughs> He's I the one that, also want you to go look we back have video at that video. Proof of that one. Right. And I also want you to go back and look at that video and um, notice that I'm laying on board. Like, that's just big enough for my back to fit on and everything else around it is pigeon crap. <laughs> <laughs> It was oh, so man. awful. And also, I want you to notice that me jumping off like, did me no good whatsoever because I died on the ground. <laughs> so, like, it was, it, it was like, die up there, die on the ground. 
And, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it was a slow death on the ground too. So if any of them, if Connor Zombie would have <laughs> fallen on top of you, picture being yeah, crushed I'm, by corpses. <laughs> right. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have been dead. But, oh my goodness. But you know, it all made sense. No, for sure, it made sense at the time. <sighs> um. What I feel do you like guys... we could. Sorry. Oh. Go no, ahead. you go. I no, was gonna go. fill. The... I go. I was just. I was talking out of my rear end because I was just gonna fill the silence. But if you have something, go for <laughs> so it. So what's the deal with airlines? Uh, actually, actually, to, I do have something <laughs> to add to what we were just talking about that I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Um, Revenge of the Hat. Oh yeah, that um, window right behind the camera right now. Yeah. Um, I the climbed one that's out. Causing this giant light on I, my poster. I climbed out of that. Um, window backwards and jumped backwards without ever looking at the ground from off, from the roof the porch, to the porch and i had to land it stand back up and, and we, we reversed it and we reversed it and made it look like he was jumping under the but roof. the fact that i jumped out of a second story window um backwards yeah. <laughs> to to be fair Three you know times. we thought it was so cool it never once looked like you'd actually jumped because you always planted your hands first so it looked like you like had like an eight foot vertical and then like, right. like <laughs> pulled yourself up. Well, I mean, it was unreasonable to think anybody could have. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I, but... I agree. It's just, it's like funny because we're like, man, it looks like you jumped on that roof. And yeah. We did. were so hyped about it. <laughs> and we did it like five times. I played like the army recruiter song in that video. Yeah. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Yeah. I just went back and watched those. We remade that film three times. And we thought it was so much better. Why did we time. do that? We, like, because we, made... we just thought we could do it better every we... time. <laughs> and like, granted that, that it was a little bit better. like Marginally time. better every yeah, time. More, yeah, but... Yeah, and I... it still made no sense. No, it didn't. I mean, for the fact, like... Uh, <laughs> I had a flashback about me being asleep and seeing someone take my hat. Yeah, like you you were like, object like oh, I didn't like I was a fly on the wall. I, yeah. I think I know who did this. Yeah. This was all this was the pre so this was pre Rapture films. This was just uh, this was just Blake Connor. Snakes are cool. Yeah, sna oh, this is this is pre Josh. There was a period of time before I met Josh where I'd made the brand Rapture films. So it was about 2 years. Um, from my freshman year to my sophomore year before I met Josh, before he joined the brand where it was technically rapture films um before that there was no unified label that all of these little shorts and sketches fell under it was just some dumb stuff i made with my friends at my house <laughs> you know yeah we had uh we had a lot of fun doing those but it was also horrible to look back on the things we made it... yeah it's really laughable it's it's something that maybe someday my kids will make fun of me for I wish that I hadn't uh, purged some of the things I made when I was younger because I really wanted to go back and laugh at things. Like a few podcasts ago, we mentioned the Josh and Alex show. Um, yeah, I want to hear that. I went back and like looked through my old phones. Like I have, I have like my phones from like when I was that age. Yeah, and I I don't have the recordings anymore. <laughs> I think the phone that they were actually recorded on. I don't have, um, but I really had my fingers crossed that I, uh, that I would be able to, to surface those because I'm, I'm just so curious on what, what they would be. Yeah. Um, I'm sure horrible, but <laughs> maybe they were gold. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so what, speaking of, I was going to say Gage here that you're the guest before I, I had something that I was going to commandeer the conversation with, but let me ask you, is there anything that you wanted to bring to the table or talk about? with us today i didn't I know was, if you prepared anything or i was just about to bring up um <clears throat> what i believe you might have been bringing up is speaking of throwing it back to things we used to do uh when we played minecraft oh that was my a huge gosh. part of our life dude uh, massive part of our life um we were we were straight up dorks man you and me i there's videos of us making um well okay this is this is a side tangent okay you remember when we yeah. made we used to make bombs yes so, me and Gage, we would take old CO2 cartridges. I, I don't know. I may have talked about this on the podcast before. I don't know. I don't think so. No. <laughs> You're like, I've never <laughs> I heard think this. this is news to me. <laughs> Bombs, what? <laughs> so, what we would do is we would, we would take old CO2 cartridges and we would hollow them out, like, at the top with, like, a pocket knife. I, I probably still have the pocket okay. knife here. Right here. 
Well, when you put one in a gun, then it would make a hole. It creates a hole, so we just make the hole bigger. A little bit bigger. And we filled them full of black powder, because I had a little black powder cannon. Right. And we'd fill them full of black powder, and I got fuse, and we'd make the fuse like a foot long. We'd go out into the woods, and we'd dig a hole, we'd plant this bomb in the hole, light it, and just run. Just run. <laughs> and... And it would proceed. It would blow up, and then we would go over there and look at it, and there'd be a hole in the ground, aka a crater. So we called them crater makers. Yeah. Uh, do not try this at home. No, uh, it was really. St you know, you think about it. You you talk about like. Well, I mean, the Fourth of July just passed, and everybody talks about how dangerous fireworks are. Imagine one of those things went off in our hands. Oh, you those, lose both your hands. Those metal, it's shrapnel. You know yeah, I mean? you might die. Yeah. It it was really bad, but it was really fun. And I, I have a video before before we were making that. Yeah. We were making paper bombs. We because we didn't know about yeah. the CO two cartridges, so we just took like white paper oh and yeah. we like wrapped it up yeah. and we taped it up and we put a fuse into it because we thought it would make a bomb. They made a boom. It wasn't like yeah. a bomb. It was just like a little burst. And there's a video of us. We were wearing safety glasses to, because we're like, yeah. Because we're trying to promote safety. Good don't try this to at home. Bombs. So we took a piece of paper, some gunpowder, and a wick. Just compacted it all together. And, um, well, you're about to see the end result. Brother, brother. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I said something about like, I was like, this reminds me of like Redstone and Minecraft. And I was quick to go, I was quick to say, don't talk about Minecraft, it'll make us look lame. <laughs> and like, as he says, he's like, he doesn't get fully through a sentence, he's like, don't talk about Minecraft, and then the fuse catches and we both scream. Hey, don't talk about Minecraft. <laughs> he throws it. We would do that, but I still remember we figured out. Gage, we made a podcast before we knew what podcasts were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Same with me and episode. Alec, yeah. Yeah, well, we... So, basically, what we did is we realized that when we played... So, we figured out what a LAN connection was. So, Gage would bring over his yeah. laptop. Listen, I would plug in my desktop. Let's do that first. <laughs> and we would, we would play Minecraft all night. We would just plug in our computers, and we'd sit in the computer room, and we'd just play for hours and hours and hours. And one day, we were... Like, man, we talk about some really funny stuff, don't we? We're so funny. So let's set up your tablet, Gage, and we'll just record our conversation. Oh, my tablet. Yeah, so you had your... I remember that thing. Mm -hmm. And you set up your tablet, and we just clicked record, and we recorded for like an hour or like an hour and a half of just like us talking. Of like, you hear us playing Minecraft in the back, and like, man, I bet if you listen to that conversation now, it would be so weird. Does it oh, not I'm sure. Exist? How old were you I, Well, you you were the one who had it. We were yeah, 16. Yeah, I think I had it on my computer. We were 16. Oh, my, oh, oh my I guarantee those conversations are weird. Oh, gosh. like I feel like oh, yeah. in an odd way, it's like at the time I probably thought they were funny. I, I'm sure in some way we said something that was incriminating. Demented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't condone any of what I said six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we filmed that one the day that I got my first speeding ticket. Oh, yeah. We made a vlog. Um, mostly because I didn't want to go home in fear of my uncle, like, give me, like, whooping my butt for getting a speeding <laughs> ticket. But, yeah. That Do you was, remember the we... late night show that me and you did, Blake? Yeah, and now to sports. Our new boyfriend's an architect. I could have built you a house if you wanted. All you had to do was ask. Sports. Oh, Josh, I still have, sometimes I still watch that. Anytime I pull up the, uh, I have, I have, from Tomorrow Never Comes, our last zombie movie on, I've archived every video we've ever done. I've, and when I say every video, I mean I've archived the video, all the raw footage, the project files. So if for any reason we ever wanted to go back and edit something, I have it on hand and I can do that. Um, and it takes up a lot of space on my hard drive, but like I'm happy to do it because it feels like I'm preserving history. Like I don't want to delete that stuff. So one of the things that, what was that even for? Do you remember what the video was going to be? I have no idea what that was for. <clears throat> We were in my computer room. I was wearing a Snuggie, a cutoff t-shirt with a clip-on tie, mm. and a fedora. And Josh was wearing, I think, the exact same thing. And <laughs> I, I was in like a bungee net chair, and he was in a computer chair with no back. And we set up my oh. iPhone um, on a tripod, and we started recording. And like we started, it was like a take for a project that we were doing, like a video. And like the take ended. And Josh is like, you're going to turn off the camera? And I was like, no, I don't think I want to. And we sat there for probably <laughs> 30 minutes rambling. 
just third like nonsense absolutely like i have no idea what we were like we were singing we were we recited part of our speech from our high school speech class nice we uh <laughs> i have i can probably play a clip of that too we have there's a lot of weird stuff that like that's if somebody, one of those that's one of those things where it's like it is a funny joke to uh record something and then just not turn off the camera yeah but it quickly becomes not funny like the longer it goes on and the fact that we did it for 30 minutes like just perfectly shows that we didn't understand how to make the joke funny like we just oh my god i can't imagine how horrible that video is um oh my god what if i just uploaded it tomorrow <laughs> I, called it, channel. I called it the early show yeah i just posted the whole video i delete it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, you do gosh. have that, that executive authority. <laughs> um, I would take executive action if that thing was posted. Dude, if that the, atrocity uh, reared its head. <laughs> the uh, the history of of um, the YouTube channel has been really weird because we didn't when we started doing videos together, we didn't create a new YouTube channel. We just yeah. like, commandeered mine. Like we just took what I was doing and we purged we didn't even purge the old videos for a long time we just kept them yeah. up and we just started uploading new stuff and it only when we started continuation <clears throat> and only when we started getting serious did we like really go through and delete a bunch of stuff for a long time that was blakey boy 313 that was the <laughs> channel yeah yeah i remember it. <clears throat> i remember having to search dude, for that dude you were one bad cat okay Let's not even bring what, that up. B four D not cat. even <laughs> bring that up. If you watch Dying to Live, I the cannot. original, uh, you <laughs> you I put I in. I think Tomorrow Never Comes also has it. Is produced by sure. One Bad Cat Studios or something yeah, like that. Like in association with. <laughs> yeah, and I like. What did I do? <laughs> like, I mean, you were honestly, I was in it. <laughs> yeah. Like I well, the whole plan was is I took all of the like. Uh, behind the scenes type yeah material and so like the plan whole plan was is that my my stuff was gonna make it into a video of its own and, or i was gonna put it on my yeah. channel yeah it just dude we still i love have... that uh i love that back in the day like before we knew what all the technicalities and the credits like stood for like you would ju we would just credit people for things they didn't do it's like <laughs> dude, pro dude. produced by gage perkins it's like yeah. uh no <laughs> like <laughs> what i sat in the room while it was edited <laughs> my um dude there's in dying to or in uh, tomorrow never comes um somebody is credited as a lamp shaker Lamp I love shaker. that there are two well there are two zion was going to be the lamp shaker and then he had to leave and so you recruited somebody else to shake a lamp for a scene in the background. And so it's like, in the credits, it says, like, Lamp Shaker 1. Like, not available. And then Lamp Shaker 2. Because, <laughs> like, we, we still, still wanted to credit him. him. Yeah. That's so dumb. Dude, I gave him... I love um, that. I really... I told Florida, um, when we made Luigi's Mansion the musical, I told uh, our friend Florida, he... I was, I was getting stuck making the prop. I was making the Poltergust prop. And there was just this wire stuck that I could not yank out for the life of me. I had like pliers and I was just trying to pull it out and I couldn't get it. So I looked over to Florida and his beefy muscles. <laughs> and I said, hey, yank this out for me. Pull this wire out so that I can do this. And he takes a bite of a whole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he did. He ripped it out. And uh, he looked at me, you know, expressionless as, as he is. And I said, all right, I'm going to put you in the credits for that. <laughs> and he said you better not forget and so he is in the special thanks for the credits that's he why did absolutely nothing else yep that's why that's funny i've i've wondered he uh why he wondered he what he, you're like what is his contribution why are we thanking him <laughs> you should have credited him as wire yanker right? wire well see i thought about it but i was like everything else it's literally like, all of everything else is serious yeah and yeah, it's like all the all the rest of the credits are professional and serious it's like so. to to do i just felt like it would undermine that so that's the only reason i didn't do it um <clears throat> gage i remember when we um do you remember when we figured out the term cinematography i was at your house and like i was like i came oh over one day gosh. i came over one day and i was like Gage, listen, I've heard this new term, okay? It's called cinematography. Have you ever heard of it? <laughs> and he's like, no, what is that? And I explained to him, like, it's like, 
lighting and like makeup and like scene composition. So we got like every lamp in Gage's house. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Like every <clears throat> lamp we could find. And we ex- like overexposed ourselves. Like you talk about like beginner film students who don't know how to light a scene. Like there's like bright white lights on our face and we're both like, oh my God, this is so cinematic. Look yeah. at it. <laughs> it, it was it was a film it was gonna be a film that was about a uh what, what, it, was it was a chicken, chicken and it was gonna be like a drastic film a drastic a, park film so yeah like, but with chickens yeah yeah it was um nice. dude I also, ridiculous. I also remember that video because we were both we we're probably like we were like 15 we we're probably like 14 or 15 at the time of that we were both greasy as heck so we had really bad acne at the time oh, yeah. and so we went into your cousin's room and we stole her makeup <laughs> and we were like <laughs> supposed to go to the grave like nobody knows it's that. fine dude it's fine it's <laughs> fine now We're filmmakers dude uh, i'm not fine. i'm gonna hear i'm gonna hear about do you that, think though. that you think the pod you think who do you think's gonna listen to this and make fun of you for that well i'm gonna share it on facebook so oh you're gonna I mean, well they're I'm not imagine that no they're, they're not okay it. listen you know how devoted they're gonna have to be to make it 51 minutes into the podcast just mm. to make fun of you what? Most people are they're I, just gonna. I don't describe my family. I mean, like I, w- I wouldn't uh, take that away from them. I'm sure they would. <laughs> they're, they're just like digging through it just to try to find something to poke fun at. <laughs> they're like, like, oh, Gage, where's I, I wouldn't go. be surprised if your dad would watch it as well. Just to do that. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> oh well, it's it, it was. Well, hey, listen, we would have looked, we looked much better. I think. I With the I foundation, still, I think I still have video clips of that uh, on my computer. Oh, I, I definitely not, still not have it. I definitely still. Josh, crabs. do you remember when we made? Um, it was me, you, and Austin. We made a babysitters video at my house that never came to fruition. No. It was like it was you and Austin, and you were coming to my house to like classic. The premise of the video. Classic. The premise of the video was that you were going to babysit my brother. Um, and he was like a devil child was like the thing. Oh, I and, do kind of remember that. And the, yeah. The um, caveat was the lights in my house, like the power was out in my house. So there were no lights. Yeah. So like, we're just going to make it a well. horror movie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and uh, I have a video of my little brother. He's like so, un- like he's probably like six or seven. He had to have been, what would that have been? That would have been like six years ago. He was probably like seven years old. And he's like, got on a white mask and he's holding like a little rubber axe and he's saying something to the effect of like you're gonna die i'm gonna put you to sleep like i I don't know exactly what it was um i'm gonna have to dig through old videos to really fill this podcast up with goodies yeah oh yeah that'll be good this this podcast has been a lot of reminiscing yeah yeah i feel like that's the theme josh um I was talking to you before we started the podcast about something that I wanted to bring up. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, it's not that bad. It's not even that big of a thing. Oh, I don't know what this I is. Just wanted to I don't tell, either. I just wanted to bring it up, okay? So the other day, I... Oh, gosh. What could I, this be? <laughs> I, was with, I was with a friend, and I went to scratch my the side of my nose. Okay. And, <laughs> Immediately it reminded me of you. Yeah, see, it's not that bad. <laughs> Immediately it reminded me of you, and so I proceeded to tell them that, like, you, how you, I tried to just explain how you itch your nose, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, that's just always amazed me. Yeah. That's how he does it. He, he's, uh, I'll yeah, demonstrate but, for everyone. Yeah, well, and it's, be- it's funny because, oh, I can hear it. I can hear it. It's funny. <laughs> the, the, Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it's like, anytime I've, like, spent an amount of time with Josh, like, I don't have to be looking, and I hear the sound, it's indistinguishable of, just... like, fingers sliding across the nose and then slapping lips. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> like That's that. Exactly what happens. It's like a cat. You scratch your face like a cat. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I don't know why I do that. I've done it my entire life, and it's <laughs> completely subconscious. Like, I don't think about it. Well, it the just first happens. Time... The first time I saw you do it, I thought you were in, like trying to do something funny intentionally. Like I nope. thought you were just acting weird. But <laughs> no, nope, nope, that's just you. It's just nice. Um, Josh, didn't you, uh, didn't you and Alex Smith dress up as ninjas and like crash Gage's birthday party one year? Yes. You, oh my. Oh my goodness. gosh! I forgot about that. <laughs> that had completely left my. They like you guys like told you told me that you were going to do it, and I think that Did was. Did we like, tell it, you? I think you did. Well, I knew. I who thought you it was. Were. I thought it was Austin that we told. 
You well, maybe Austin told me, but Gage didn't know. Keegan didn't know. And to, yeah, so you're brave going in there with Keegan. <laughs> oh my god, he's he's. A didn't Alex get like manhandled? Going. Oh yeah, no, he like tackled him and like probably punched him a few times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need Do you to, want to tell the story? this story from the beginning. I can't tell it. Okay, I don't really, I don't here's here's remember. what I remember. I I forgot about okay. it. Okay, well I forgot I'll paint, it too. Well, listen, if both of you have forgotten, I can exaggerate as much as I want. There you go. <laughs> so, well, um, I mean, it was ridiculous to start with. Pretty so. much what happened was. Um, well, at the time, they were not, like, you guys weren't, like, terribly close. I mean, like, to the point where, like, I mean, you didn't invite Josh to your birthday party. But, like, he knew all of us. Right. You know? I, did, I was like, you know, forget him. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Classic. And uh, Josh, I'm pretty positive that you texted me. Or if you didn't text me, either you texted Austin and he let me know. But you and Alex Smith dressed up in all black. Like, you surrounded, you like... Black shirts, black sweatpants, black shoes. You wrapped towels around your head so that nobody would know your identity. And Gage had, like, we would always okay, stay in I the basement. Okay, I think we give us a little more credit than that. What? Because while I don't remember this, like, this night super well, I do know that Alex and I have, on multiple occasions, dressed up as ninjas. And we do it way better than that. <laughs> I thought they were in... Well, I mean, I don't... Well, okay. Let's just... You come in... Looking like you just walked out of feudal Japan. All right. <laughs> I can't reveal. I can't reveal what I know. Like, I almost wish that I didn't And they know. just leave. It's not like, like, they didn't, like, just take off their masks. Like, hey, guys. Just like, what's up? It's us. Out. <laughs> no. Yeah, they just left. <laughs> That's like, called performance art. You have to see it through. <laughs> just left. Dude, what an odd event, like, to recount that later on. It's like, hey, remember that time that I, like, broke into your birthday party? No, I, like, attacked people. I had absolutely forgotten about that until, you, like, it just, I just remember them coming in and leaving. I mean, you know, I know, I don't know, I just had completely forgotten about that. It goes back to before, you know. Like, Blake, did you and Austin even reveal who we were? Or I feel like, I feel like. Mystery? No, we, like, we, we played dumb for the night, but I feel like the next day. We probably yeah. said something. I'm sure we left the night, you know, like the next, by the time everybody left, they'd known it was you, but that night it was a mystery. Yeah. That and is you know, so funny. You know, it's kind of odd that, um, shortly after, like it didn't take long for us to just go back to what we were doing, like <laughs> without knowing who it was. Like <laughs> we didn't care. We just like, we're like, what? like, well, okay, let's get back weird, to this weekend. Back yeah. <laughs> We bowling. Yeah. <laughs> you send the, the bowling ball back and all the me's go, oh, and they like, jump. Who cares who, who, those, who those ninjas were that broke yeah. our house? It doesn't matter. Like, they could have been absolute strangers actually intentionally like, <laughs> intending to do harm. And maybe all they had was Nerf swords. But, like, <laughs> but Yeah, no, we, we absolutely did not care. Well, well I, think, I think there was some conversation between me and Josh about, like, what are they going to do? Like, do you think this is really going to, like, if they literally don't know that this is a joke... Like, what are they going to think when you break into their house? Well, I will, I will say that there was, like, a gun safe, like, right in, in the vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex Smith gets I mean, shot. Right. <laughs> right. But I think just as soon as I saw the Nerf swords, I was like, I don't know who this is, but, like, it's, you know. It's fine. It's funny. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, if we would have come in with, like, shot real guns. swords. <laughs> 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 No, yeah, oh my you, god. You probably wouldn't have made it out if you had a real weapon. <laughs> or you might have. Maybe we wouldn't have made it out. <laughs> yeah, we had real swords. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Thank you, Blake, for bringing that memory back to me. No. Because yeah, I had completely forgotten about that. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm in the same boat. What <sighs> other weird crap have I done? Oh my gosh. It makes you think. It makes yeah. you think about all the things that you've done in your life. And, and like, like me and you were discussing, it just like you're. You don't ever forget them, really. You it just, just gets pushed way back in your head. It's like, because I said that, and both of you are like, yeah, that did happen. But it's not like a thing that you like, you probably would have never thought about it again. If no. I hadn't just like, no, I haven't thought about it that. since that, like the That's, next day, probably after that. Yeah. Some weird thing may have triggered it, but no, I, I had completely forgotten. <laughs> a ninja breaks into your house and you're like, <laughs> yeah, and then I'll remember. Oh, this reminds me. <laughs> right before he chops off your head. Right. Well, then I'll be reminded of the story, and I'll be like, oh, well, I should just go to my gun safe. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's clearly right. in the middle of the room. Uh, his sword is not a Nerf uh, sword, so Gage said. <laughs> uh, check the sword. Oh, yeah, not Nerf. Okay, so I gotta go get a gun. I'm in the right to shoot. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, it's been an hour already. 
do we have any closing thoughts? Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't know where the it's time been, goes. It's been uh, real. It's been fun. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> but it hasn't been asparagus. Nice. I want to take a little tangent. That was a oh, vine God. that Josh, we made in my house of Josh. <laughs> And he said, uh, he was like leaving. He had like all of his stuff on and he was like super low energy and he's just like shifting back and forth. He's like, well, Blake, it's been real. It's been fun, but it hasn't been asparagus. And I don't know how many people have said that to me in the past year because like, <laughs> I'll say it. Gage says it. I don't, Josh, I don't even know if you still say it, but like I've heard Bailey oh. Connerly say it. I've said it since then. Yeah, <laughs> That's all. I don't even say it the right way anymore. Just, I've said it once in my whole life. <laughs> I've never. And like that's the impact that you had. <laughs> yeah. Mic <laughs> drop. It's the most referenced line. You created a catchphrase and it's so like you're so cool you don't even say it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like how many times oh, do you, you think. you still using that? Yeah. How many times do you think Arnold Schwarzenegger said like I'll be back or hasta la vista baby when it was done? He said it once. Yeah. In the script, and everybody's over. like, "Yeah, I'm gonna quote this forever." <laughs> that's the coolest line. Oh, oh my god! Well, that's awesome. this has Closing been thoughts. <laughs> Destination Unknown. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe to our Mario Sunshine newsletter if you are interested. Gage and I, as soon as this podcast is over, are gonna go start building the flood. Mm, so, yeah, if you'd like exciting. some updates on how that's going to look, send us an email. That is Mario Sunshine at gmail .com, and we'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye, guys. And as you can see here, LeBron James fit hit through the football for his 179th consecutive strike in the fourth inning of the tennis match Wimbledon Championship of Soccer basket. Home run, baby.